High Court, praying the court to validate Speaker Bagbin's declaration of four seats vacant. Benjamin Yamutete wants the High Court to stop the four and were declared vacant by the Speaker from holding themselves as MPs until the case is determined. But that is not all. He also filed a separate suit preventing Speaker Bagbin from recalling the House. Let's get into the details of this, or as some people call it, the mess. Dennis Widam Poiberi has come through the two documents and joins us here with some details. Uh, Council. Uh, listen, it looks like Parliament's problems will not end anytime soon. What else is in this suit? Well, so the matters are becoming complicated as the days go by. Every turn, there are twists and turns every single time. Now, we are hearing of two pending suits against the Speaker of Parliament in one instance and in another against the Speaker of Parliament and four others. And these four others basically are the members of Parliament whose seats have been declared vacant for which reason we find ourselves in this situation of this parliamentary, um, um, I mean, situation. Yeah. Now, you recall that in the midst of the conversation, there were those who say that the appropriate forum for um, determination as to whether a seat is vacant or an MP has been validly elected mm -hmm. is the High Court. They make reference to Article 99 of the 1992 Constitution. So that's exactly what Benjamin Tete has done in this particular suit, to say that, look, there is... Uh, a question to be answered as to whether these MPs have vacated their seats or not, and by way of what had happened with the Speaker making that declaration. Mm -hmm. He is of the view that what the Speaker did is the right thing to do, but I'm bringing this to you for you to make that final decision for us to know if indeed they should continue to be in Parliament or they should right. vacate their seats. And that is what, that's the basis of this particular suit, where the Speaker is named as a defendant together with the MPs. For specific relief that he's seeking, that's a declaration that the Speaker's ruling on October 17, was in accordance with Article 97.1 G and H, and was therefore valid. Mm -hmm. He also makes the case that he wants an interlocutory injunction to restrain and prevent the embattled MPs from holding themselves out as MPs in the eighth Parliament, and also having access to the Chamber of Parliament until this uh, suit is determined. Right. He goes on to ask for a, uh, a perpetual injunction in that regard, and a lot more. In the other suit, where it is, where it's he names only the speaker as the defendant. In that instance, um, so in that particular suit, mm -hmm. what he's simply seeking to do is almost saying the same thing, but this right. time around, asking that a determination be made that what the speaker did on the 17th of October is the right position of the law, mm -hmm. and that those MPs, their seats should be deemed vacant, they should be restrained from parliament, they are, that their being in parliament would be an illegality or mm. an unlawful act. For that matter, the Speaker should be, direct, should be ordered to remove them from Parliament and stop them from coming into the House. Mm, I see. And then there's also a particular relief that uh, you know, he seeks about recalling the House? Yes. So in reference to that, he's also seeking that, you know, there are attempts for Parliament to be summoned. Mm -hmm. He says that considering what is happening now, Parliament should not be recalled until this suit and other matters regarding the legibility or otherwise of those MPs right. is determined finally. So that too is also on the table. And that's basically what, 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 what these suits and, are about. And, and that is just, uh, you know, hold it for me. Let me go on to the phone lines now and speak to Nick Paco Samwa Addo. Well, my understanding is Nick Paco is on Zoom. Uh, he's the lawyer for the plaintiff, Benjamin Teteyemo. Uh, Nick, good evening and thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Why does your clients deem it fit to take on this cause? Well, good evening to your... I hope you can hear me. Absolutely, Lenny. Okay, so good evening to your wonderful viewers and uh, listeners as well. Um, my law firm represents the, um, the plaintiffs in the two suits, even though I'm not the lawyer of the record. Um, but I still had the law firm, so right. I can speak to the matter in this speech. Now, the issue is this. If you recall, there's a certain aspect of the matter in the Supreme Court, which relatively deals with the interpretation and uh, or the challenge that the speaker has sought to interpret the provisions to do with the fact as to whether uh, by, by moving from a particular party which elected you or whose ticket you stood to file as an independent, 
you had therefore crossed carpet. And by necessary implication, you had vacated your seat. And so the speaker gave a ruling which the honorable, um, uh, well, if we still the majority leader, the Afenio Martin took to court and challenged that the speaker had aired by interpreting that provision and that that provision interpretation of the constitution was the sole preserve of the Supreme Court. So that technically deals with whether or not the speaker was wrong in assuming the jurisdiction that he did in, you know, making the ruling that he did, which, um, which in the opinion of the plaintiff in the Supreme Court amounted to an interpretation of the constitution. My client is in court with specific respect to the provisions of the constitution, which actually state explicitly that matters to do with the declaration of, or matters to do with whether or not a dispute has arisen as a result of a vacancy in the in parliament must be determined by the high court. So he has exercised his right as a citizen to say that, look, in his opinion, once the, the ruling that the speaker gave was a valid ruling. And so if it is a valid ruling, then technically those seats are, you know, vacant. And so he's seeking the declaration from the high court to confirm the speaker's ruling. And once that is upheld by the court, then we will be in line with the constitutional provision, which says that it is the high court that makes a determination I see. as to whether a seat is vacant or not. So we want to put the controversy, you understand, if there's any mm -hmm. beyond that, mm -hmm. so that we will be clear that once the constitution says that the forum for determining any dispute as to whether a seat is vacant or not is that of the high court, we say that, okay, what is going on in the Supreme Court is about whether or not the speaker rightly or wrongly, if, if it's right, then it means that he applied the provision. If he was wrong, it means that he interpreted the Constitution. That is the reason of the Supreme Court, to well. interpret and enforce the Constitution. In our case, we are in court, first and foremost, to have the, the High Court, which is the court under the Constitution, vested with jurisdiction to make declarations in respect of whether or not a seat is vacant for that court to exercise that jurisdiction. Secondly, we are saying that if the court agrees with the speaker, right, the high court agrees with the speaker's ruling, it means that the people who are affected, the four MPs who are affected, mm -hmm. are no longer members of parliament. Very well. And so they don't have any legal basis to partake in the proceeding of parliament. So if there should be a recall, that recall should exclude them. And so if there's a recall of parliament, there's the danger. And, they have, and if you look at until the controversy about these four people are determined by the court, they must not be allowed. And so Mr. Speaker, hold your hand until me, me, I'm afraid the controversy is by Sorry, okay. Very well, right. I'm afraid we'll have to leave our conversation here. All right. But thank you okay. so much for, okay. uh, you know, putting yeah, some, welcome. yeah, explanation to uh, the, the suits that we've seen so far. I appreciate your, your time. Ni Pakbo Samoa Addo, he represents uh, Benjamin Tete Yemu, or his law firm represents Benjamin uh, Tete Yemu. Uh, who has now launched two new suits against Parliament and the four MPs in question.